Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to love. But you respected him. I've been saving my body, my mind, just for this occasion. Now I have the opportunity to finally show the world that I am the best fighter in the world. Before we put on our fight face, I'll take this time to thank Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Apparently he has his fight face on. Perhaps weary of his opponent's easy praise, Hagler quit the publicity tour and began training 11 weeks before the fight. While Leonard worked out before crowds, Hagler kept off the radar, taking only urgent calls from his family. As fight night approached, the champ entered that dark place where his motivation lived. He wouldn't eat the food that was brought on his plate. He would always switch it with his trainers, uh, Goody and Pat Petronelli, because he figured if they were going to poison anybody, they would poison him. Marvin's camp was very paranoid. They didn't want to have any Ray Leonard spies in there. And Marvin was just in this war mode. He was like a bull that was snorting. Hagler and Leonard finally met on April 6, 1987 at Caesars Palace, the location where, seven and a half years earlier, each fought for his first title. I was the inspector that night in Ray Leonard's dressing room. And the dressing rooms were adjacent to each other. When uh, Ray was getting his hands taped by Angelo Dundee, that they were yelling through the wall, Hagler, you're an old man. You're, you're, you're not going to win tonight. The intensity of Marvin Hagler at that point was unlike any other fighter I'd ever seen. While I examined him, I don't believe that he even acknowledged anything I said or did. He stared straight through me. He was scary. It meant more than just being a champion. It was about bragging rights. For Marvin Hagler, it was really his legacy going into that fight because he had been the middleweight champion for a long time. Sugar Ray Leonard was kind of like the cherry on top, and he really needed that to sort of validate himself. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC middleweight championship of the world. It meant more than just being a champion. It was about bragging rights. It was that moment of victory that will define who we are. What we all wanted to see was another Hearns Hagler. We all wanted to see Marvin tear into this pretty boy here and make him sorry that he took this fight. Marvin uh, started boxing him when he should have put a little more pressure on him and he's going uh, right-handed more than he should have. He boxed conventionally, which to Ray must have been like, wow. This is great. I don't have to deal with the southpaw. He couldn't have made him any more comfortable than if he had drawn him a bath and gotten in his slippers. Leonard was like a bumblebee, and Hagler was out there with a net trying to catch him, and he just couldn't catch him. You could hear his trainer yell, 30 seconds. And then Leonard would go into a flurry. I used to call him 30-second pitter-patters. That gets rounds. That makes, you know, catch the attention of the judges. So he tried to take every advantage. The first four rounds, I was floating. I was rather surprised how easy I was able to hit him and uh, how slow he was. He was also really messing with Hagler's mind. He was really trying to get into his head and get him to fight his fight, trying to tell Hagler, you're nothing but a, a puncher, you know, you're a slugger, you don't know how to box. He said, slow down, you little bitch. Fight like a man. He said, fight like a man. I said, not right now. <laughs> not right now. Now he's starting even to taunt Hagler. When that fight started, it was a Hagler crowd. By the sixth round, it was a Leonard crowd, because people were shocked that Ray was not only in there, 
but that he was winning. Hagler was really frustrated. And then he started coming, you know, forget this boxing, I'm going to go ahead and knock this guy out. And that's when the fight really got exciting and got very close because he was winning those rounds. As Sugar Ray Leonard's legs tired, he began to linger dangerously within marvelous Marvin Hagler's range. In the ninth round, the champion, a three to one favorite, appeared to be in control. And Leonard now with his back to the ropes. And another left hand by Hagler. Leonard's left hand down at his side, Hagler peppering him. Ray Leonard was hurt in the corner. Ray was getting battered by Marvin on the ropes, and you can see Ray was thinking about it giving it up. And he admitted to me, he said, yeah, I did think if I couldn't. And I said, Ray, get out of that corner. Get out of the corner. Fight your way out. Ray Leonard was able to do in that round even more than he had done in other rounds of the fight, making it appear that he had won in such a way that he implanted that clearly in the judge's mind. Hagler was still cool. I didn't see at any time where the Petronellis felt desperate. Like, you know, he's winning the fight. You got to knock him out. The 12th and final round began with both fighters calling each other out, and it concluded with both standing, both signaling victory. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. That one word, new, when he heard the word new, the look in his face, his whole world collapsed. Marvin, you thought you won the fight? I did win the fight. There's no doubt about it. After about the fourth round, I took the whole fight, kept it going. Well, the most difficult fight you can score is a banger versus a boxer. And I'm sure Marvin felt, here's another situation where I got jobbed. One judge, Jojo Guerra, had Leonard winning 10 of 12 rounds. But the other two judges made closer calls, each with a different outcome. I gave the fight to Leonard. I had seven rounds to five, and, and the reason was he had the most effective punches. He made Hagler miss. Leonard was moving around, boxing, boom, boom. But Hagler was pressing him all the time, and he was doing the harder punches, I thought. I think the reason why he lost the fight was totally up here and uh, had to do with his own insecurities in regards to Leonard. He almost felt inferior to Ray. He, he always said his motto was destruct and destroy. Well, he didn't have that mindset for this fight. He really didn't, surprisingly. They fought at Leonard's pace and at Leonard's style, and Marvin just couldn't put enough pressure on him. I cannot hurt Hagler. I knew that, but I could beat him on points. I threw better punches, cleaner punches, and far more punches than he threw. That's how you win a fight. Ray Leonard stole that fight fair and square. And of course, Hagler was bitter. When the fight was over, Leonard told me himself, you beat me. And then when they take it away from me like that, it's hard to believe. All the things that had tormented him all his life, there they were one more time, full display in the whole world. I won the fight, they took my titles. I got conned by this guy, they gave it to Sugar Ray. I'm not marvelous, I'm just Marvin, just like I always thought. He just couldn't take losing to anyone, but to lose to Sugar Ray Leonard, I, I think that that hurt him more than words can describe.